Chris is a YouTube vlogger from England. He loves the taste of the pickle. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yes! Wow! Hello and welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad, but joined as always by England's top Japan enthusiast. He's right over there. Right over there. Mr. Pete Donaldson himself. Pete, how you doing? I'm good, Chris. I'm currently reading the running order off a computer mm. that I lost you <laughs> in not... Japan. Oh, this... I promised you the third... Me losing something story Fuck. on the Abron Japan. This is uh, it's a it's a um, what do you call it when there's three pictures? Not a trifecta, a tri, tri a triptych, triptych, a tri disaster. Triptych. I left a um, computer in um, a very nice sort of resort hotel uh, down in Miyazaki, mm. uh, the one where they had issues with me um, going in. Pool was closed, but uh, they closed the pool at four p.m. What's that about? Um, the one with the Picari sweat um, logo on it. Um, well, it, how it, did uh, you? You never said like uh, you. You obviously can't go in onsen if you've mm. got tattoos. You've yeah. got you're caked in them. Yeah. Wait a minute, though. You had a plan. You had the silicon legs. I had a plan. Legs. I had the silicon legs, but I put them on, and I decided that the silicon legs, they looked too conspicuous. If you know what I mean. <laughs> It right. looked worse than me just having tattoos. Yes. So I absolutely washed out on them. You on can't the really yeah, go in no. and wearing anything. Wearing silicon. Yeah, that's a no. big no-no. That's a big no-no. I saw. I, I, but how did I, they like throw you out the pool then? Well, I well, a, I managed to sneak into the onsen. Ooh. They had this beautiful onsen in this in this uh, Sheraton, and uh, and uh, I was sat in like one of the warm baths, um, trying to hide my legs in a really weird way. Um, and it really made me laugh because this lad, um, we're all in, in Billy Bollocks, um, he, 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 ca he came over to the, 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 the water I was sat in and he scooped up a bit and he, he was just fresh to the onsen and he just poured it onto his gentles uh, before okay. going outside. What I the don't know, I, to make them look bigger? I don't know. Like just Because he was heading outside <laughs> Did he not want the cold air hitting his... But it was warm anyway. I couldn't figure out what That's... the reason why he poured hot water onto his uh, winkle dinkles. Um, yeah, Pro so anyway. Probably to, to, to shop hey. from... Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Oh my god. Anyway, so I managed to get the onsen, but in the pool, they, they yeah, they stopped me from. Um, what did they, they said, say? Can you cover, can you cover your legs? Shut up, fuck off. Can you cover your tattoos, please? So yeah, it was uh, very so you underwhelming. Just, you should put your hand over them. And just yeah, like, went... walked in. Like a, like crab, a crab, yeah. yeah. Hello, <laughs> hello. Um, but uh, so I left the laptop in Miyazaki. Realised when we got to um, Fukuoka, it was like you know, three hours drive away. It just wasn't worth. It was. It's one of those ones where you sort of go, oh, gee, I mean, what's, what's a laptop? Just get a new one and just get it get it sent eventually. Um, but I we got back to um, Tokyo and I basically emailed the the, the, the Sheraton mm. and they sent it. Ooh. Basically, by the time we got to Tokyo, um, they'd rang ahead to the the hotel we were staying in. The woman went, "The laptop, your laptop is arriving tomorrow," and I, they'd sent wow. it on a Saturday. They boxed it up. I'd email them and said, "Have you got my laptop?" They went, "Yeah, we have. You also left three hundred yen in, in your room. Do you want that as well?" I went, "Yeah, fine. Keep that as a tip. Keep that as a tip. Sending my laptop. Sending my laptop. They boxed up the laptop beautifully. They sent it all the way to Tokyo. It got there in like a day and a half." Um, and it arrived in Tokyo, and um, it was like twelve quid to send it, wow. and they sorted everything out from bean to cup. It was brilliant. So I was the so Sheraton, impressed. Sheraton, they may not have let they you in the pool. They may not have let me in the pool. But they sent you your but laptop. They sure know how to eat, how to send a, a laptop via via plane, presumably. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful, Beautiful story, stuff. I think. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's but if you ever lose it, but it's really good. We lost like four things. And I left a, something in the toilet. I left a, me, the same bag in the toilet um, in, a, in, in, in a shop. It's just terrible. Yeah. So um, if you ever lose anything in Japan, you'll, you'll always get it back. Yeah. I mean, always get it back. You will. Except yeah. I think Shala's AirPods got pinched out of a hotel room in Osaka. Once. What? We left some AirPods in a room, I think, in um, Osaka. Mm. And when we asked the hotel, the AirPods there, they're like, no, they're gone. Mm. That was the only time we didn't get it back. That is very rare. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. it was. Sketchy. Right. Osaka, lovely place, <laughs> sketchy hotels. Oh, <laughs> Maybe somebody thought it was a takoyaki and popped it in their mouth. Absolutely. Mm. That's, <laughs> they opened the AirPod case, mm. swallowed it whole. We've got a story here from Jeffrey from Australia this week. He begins, hello, Chris and Pete. You've honoured me in the past by reading my story last year about the time a sheepish taxi driver pretended to drop me off at the Blue Note Jazz Club in Tokyo. I don't remember that. 
We have too many. <laughs> too we have got 100 stories a year. <laughs> I want to know what that was. Uh, earlier this mm. year, though, my uh, lovely partner, Robin, and I came to Japan for a six-week trip where we spent over two weeks in Hokkaido for some snowboarding and sightseeing, riding the Shimanami Kaido bikes over the islands, walking the Kumino Kodo in Wakayama, and uh, in time... We saw Yamagata, Hiroshima, Nara, and Tokyo. That's greedy. Lovely. That is. Anyway, one night we were relaxing in a hotel watching television when who did I see on a television show called Cool Japan but the one and only Peter Macy, Premier 2 himself. Oh, mm. God. He, <laughs> cool Japan. That's, I'll get to that in a minute. I exclaimed, <laughs> whoa, American Pete. My partner, of course, had no idea who the bloody hell that was. The show <laughs> American Pete was on was a panel discussion about the particular aspect of Japanese culture known as hone and tatemai. One has a public persona that is different to uh, one's real private persona. That's right. Hone is like what you really think and tatemai right. is when you lie. Ah. The, you know, people in Japan, they mm. kind of, they're what they're really thinking, mm. they sort of keep that hidden yeah. unless they get drunk and then you find out very fast. <laughs> the, uh, the panel discussed the difficulties of foreigners living in Japan and understanding this. The discussion centered around how difficult it was for foreigners to form meaningful relationships with Japanese people while in Japan. Pete was presenting very differently from how I have come to know him. Gone was the outgoing, talkative and entertaining American Pete. Here was a subdued, respectful and frankly (laughs) boring Peter Macy. My thought at the time was, uh, I think it would be good... I th- what I think I think I would be good with it. Think Whatever gets you it. through the day as smoothly and pleasantly as possible. Yes, almost <laughs> everyone on the panel, however, found it was to be one of the most difficult parts of their time in Japan. Chris, have <laughs> you and Sharla found this part of Japanese culture difficult? How do people in your expat crew find it? How do unique and engaging individuals like Natsuki manage to survive? <laughs> Interested to hear, Jeffrey from Australia. Well, first of all, Cool Japan. Have mm. you ever seen Cool Japan? It's not like NHK. Anything well, on NHK really. is kind of like, it's quite Sterilized. hard to watch because all of the people talk like this. They do talk like that. Here we are in Sonso Prefecture and we're going to have some fucking food. <laughs> we're always eating food. I That's remember, all we do. I, Here's some very unique <laughs> noodles you won't get anywhere else except that you kind of do all the time, everywhere. <laughs> it's like a 1984 sterilized mm. TV yeah, it's just shit. And I, I, I was on NHK World once, and that very voiceover was there. Mm. There's a shot of me eating some pickles, right? And yeah. there's this shit. This but... man is a pickle monster. It Do not like... approach him. <laughs> I remember going, like, there's a shot of me going, mmm. Pickles. And he goes, Chris loves the taste of the pickles. <laughs> and there's no like irony or humor. It's just very monotonous. It's just he very... likes, he loves to slide that pickle Chris into is... his mouth. <laughs> Chris is a YouTube vlogger from England. He loves the taste of the pickle. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> shit. Clip that. Oh, God. Lovely. But cool Japan's like this initiative where they basically get some foreigners in a room yeah. and they go. The lamest ass. I'm not putting uh, Pete in that particular panel. Well, but they're always in lame. It's really lame. I think I was asked to go on it once. So I was like, no. And there's, always, there's always a man who's about 50 who's yes. got, got a bit of red in his hair. <laughs> He's got a bit of color in his hair. <laughs> hey, kids, I'm still cool. <laughs> he's got that kind of like dead eyed kind of day. expat man <laughs> he's got <laughs> Colonel Kurtz he's like hey guys I'm having a great time here on NHK don't look in my shed it's as if there's a gun pointed at all the people <laughs> off stage um, but it's kind of like propaganda almost the idea yeah. is to make Japan look cool mm. and discuss aspects of why Japanese culture is unique yeah. and it just, it's just very contrived yeah. I remember people telling me stories about how we had to like talk about how good Japanese boxes are it's like the Japanese box is a unique box to Japan. I, I mean, I'll tell you fold what. It in f- the, boxy, ways. the box they put my laptop in was, uh, I sent to my partner, I said, Sarah, I'd love to take this box home. It's so <laughs> thick. You should the wear corrug- HK. The corrugated cardboard was so thick, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the boxes are quite they, good. Yeah, exactly. NHK, yeah, let the cool got you. It's cool, isn't it? Cool Japan. In the pocket, a big card by this lad. Disgusting. But something's not cool if you call it cool. Inherently, you know, if I'm like, oh, I'm cool, Chris. Nice mm. to meet you guys. It's yeah, like, yeah. I'm not cool. You're a dickhead. I own a skateboard. Don't look in my shed. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I hate seeing Pete on uh, on NHK's mm. Cool Japan because it's just not Pete. It's like mm. Pete had a lobotomy and he has to. He's he's one of the better people, obviously. He's mm. still really funny and he's, you know, great. It's like when I do voice of his Discovery Channel. I don't, right, right. I right. don't actually care when I saw a truck is on Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I like the idea of a right, lot of the TV right, right. shows. Yeah, I like yeah. I like people, you know, diving for gems in the Bering Sea. <laughs> I love that shit. Gold <laughs> divers. Yeah. Some of the shows. I don't care who's building a, a cabin off grid. 
in, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. That sounds, that sounds interesting. Anyway, yeah. it's better cool Japan. But I the question was Hone Tatemai. Yes, it's very difficult. I used to have this problem with staff uh, when I was you know working at school. Mm. I'd make a lesson plan. I'd go, do you like this lesson plan? They'd mm. go, hmm, mm. oh, it's difficult. Oh, difficult. It's not, it's not difficult. It's either a good plan or it's not. Right. And they, mm. you know, out of being polite. Ooh. Yeah, they'd often be like, oh, it's a difficult, difficult, different lesson plan. And You're using a lot of bad language. It was just difficult to... <laughs> you're just drawing a, a, you're drawing a really erotic drawing of the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> They're doing things to each other. What's going on? <laughs> What the fuck? This isn't a lesson plan. <laughs> this is a receipt from McDonald's. <laughs> and you've written knowledge on it in big letters. You, you know my lesson, lesson plans plan. all too well. <laughs> uh, it, it's difficult, yeah. It's mm. difficult to crack the code and know what people are really thinking. And that's why when I look at my Japanese friends that I gravitate towards, it's people like Natsuki. It's Ryotaro, God forbid. Yeah. It's uh, my friend Yuki or Yasu. It's people that speak their mind. Because it can be really difficult to break through and get yeah. to that, you know. Um, so, so if I was um, on Cool Japan and I was um, English Pete, well, I was talking about Hone and Tatamai, right? Hone, Hone and Tatamai, right? Okay. But back to NHK World, right? Let's, let's but you, you give me a su- you give me a subject and I'll talk about it um, on, in in the NHK style. Uh, Anything about Japan you think that people need to know about? Something cool? The uh, the rivers running, r- the rivers running with rivers. Koi, koi carp fish in rivers. rivers. Koi carp, orange, nice, great times. Don't drown. <laughs> now you got to do it in the contrived, oh, yeah, sort okay. of like lobotomized American accent. <laughs> it's they, I that never is, hear like yeah. British people on NHK World. They get the the worst American voiceover artists. Mm. Well, they're not even they're not even voiceover artists. They're just people in a room who just sort of go. They're a bit mm. AI. It's a bit uh, AI. It is. It's that yeah. kind of very. Steered kind of, um, mm, I think there's a GPT kind of vibe. It is a bit, and I think the reason is because maybe that sort of slow, monotonous style mm. it means like Japanese viewers can also, yeah, follow along. Enjoy it's it, not yeah. like because if it was you, I don't think most of the Japanese audience would know not with this jet what lag. the bloody hell's going on. No, <laughs> no, so you need that. Like, no, Pete loves the taste of the sushi, he munches it with his mouth, it needs to be like it. slow. <laughs> Munch the sushi. Munches the sushi. He slurps the sushi. Never write a script for NHK. He snorts the sushi <laughs> up his fucking... <laughs> anyway, what's the news this week? Let's oh. never speak of Cool Japan again. Chris, you're not going to believe this. Um, a city in Japan has got a deal with truancy because there are too many kids not doing enough work in about their schools. I'll tell you for why. Probably those big backpacks that they have to carry around. If I <laughs> I picked one of them up in Tokyo, Tokyo hands, got a new logo, beautiful, um, <coughs> beautiful logo, um, and it's it, this it, it, these bags are massive and heavy and leather, like the kind of bag you took to. to it Japan. was yeah, pretty much true. Or I hoisted up Mount Fuji. Well, anyway, um, kids don't want to go to school, and a uh, city in Japan is tackling a rise in truancy with the help of a robot assistant that officials hope will encourage absentee children to attend classes remotely and eventually coax them back to school. What the fuck? Two robots equipped with uh, microphones, speakers, and cameras are expected to appear in classrooms in, in November in Kumamoto, southwest Japan, according to the Mainichi Shimbun newspaper. A great newspaper. Um, teachers will continue to be present. The City Board of Education hopes that the addition of the one metre high self-propelling robots will help absent children overcome their anxiety and give them the confidence <laughs> to return to in-person education yeah uh, if i know schools i think rocking up at the school gates with a little robot might you know make you stand out a bit more with the other naughty kids eh with the terminator in the corner with the... <laughs> like, what the fuck that's is true this? actually yeah if you what do is if this you, if you if you treat me badly he will shoot you <laughs> He will blow you up. Um, students learning remotely will be connected to the tablet equipped, equipped uh, robots via their laptops, uh, allowing the, to them to attend the same lessons as their, as their class, classmates and take part in discussions. So this is kind of a little bit like, you know that restaurant in Tokyo where they have people who uh, have accessibility issues and mm. they can't work in restaurants, so they basically um, reside at home where they've got you know the things all they need to, mm. to, to, to live yeah. um, and, and mobility systems and stuff, and they uh, work, you know, a nine to five in a cafe, um, but via the avatar of a like a sort of yeah, robot thing, really. which is pretty cool, pretty futuristic and similar good. similar sort of vibes. Um, Two thousand seven hundred and sixty children of primary and junior high school age in the city of uh, Kumamoto um, will be uh, you know and, and have not been attending uh, in, in twenty twenty two. The fourth consecutive annual rise since um, twenty eighteen. So I mean. 
It's, I, I mean, the last time I saw some children from what was presumably Kumamoto was in um, actually uh, uh, the, the beach, Shirahama Beach. Um, some children turned up with a Kumamono um, a Kumamon, bear. The bear. Kumamon, yeah, sorry, Kumamon bear inflatable <laughs> um, sort of ball and they're whacking at each other in, in the sea and it flew in my direction and I picked it up and hit it but just as I did it a gust of wind blew it right down the beach and oh, the child the children went further into the water than I was comfortable with uh, Sarah found it very funny oh my God. Uh, and so I felt the need when we were driving through Kyushu um, that we had to go to Kumamoto to apologise. So we went to that bit. There's a weird bit <laughs> near the ferry where they've just got like 50 Kumamon bears. Really? Have you seen them? No. Sounds it's amazing. Like, there's like a choir of them. There's like 30 there, all in a choir formation. There's a one as big as like a house. Um, there's <laughs> ones representing the zodiac signs. There's one that looks like he's having a shootout. They're just <laughs> all over this sort of ferry terminal. But it's a deserted ferry terminal. It doesn't look like there's many ferries coming in to the port. Uh, but it's a unique little um, thing where there's just like 50 Kumamon bears. Running around. So I felt like I had to apologise because I'd basically drowned a child <laughs> oh with, with the, through, through Kumamon. I'd, we'd like to elaborate. Pete did not drown a child. Well, I didn't see him. He, he, he disappeared from view. I don't so he know. Knocked, he knocked into the sea. The kids knocked ran to, to get it. Yeah. 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 He was fine. He was fine. Good but, stuff. Uh, but yeah, th- th- that was the last child, presumably from Kumamoto, that I, that I saw. <laughs> I bought some Kumamon pants. I don't think the kid was from Kumamoto. You the, can get Kumamon is... outside of yeah, Kumamoto. Yeah, He's fair. the most widely sold mascot in Japan, after all. Would you be happy if you were at school, bearing in mind that, you know, to be fair... You're from a long lineage of Robot Wars fans. <laughs> Would you be happy with little robots running around your school? I think... Instead of children. It could be cool if there's a kid getting bullied and the robot right. just turns up and it's like, Yamate <laughs> Godot, stop. <laughs> and it's got like little darts it can shoot. Yeah. Or paintballs. Or just electricity. Or tasers. Yeah. Uh, paintballs. Bear spray. <laughs> bear spray, yeah. Come on, That'd be good. Spray. That'd be good. Yeah. Um, I don't think this is a good idea. Mm. Natsuki was actually famously truant for most of his time at school. He joined like a biker gang, didn't he? I don't. I think it was just a smoker gang. Mm. I don't think they had bikes. Well, didn't, was bike, didn't they, didn't they call bicycle, their hair back I think, and I th- like I think punk rock? Bi- bicycle gang, not like actual motorbike gang, mm. like a bicycle gang. Natsuki right. joined, um, <laughs> and they listened to punk rock music and pretended to be cool. Yeah. But yeah, he wasn't at school, and I don't think the robot would have stopped Natsuki from uh, <laughs> from truanting. from not going yeah. in. But uh, yeah, what a weird and Pointless idea. Never mind. There's better ideas than this. Ring up the parents and be like, why is your bloody kid coming to school? <laughs> <laughs> but I do like the idea of a robot going around the corridors shooting people with darts. Who bully. Mm. That's that's the future. Yeah. That's the way. True. That's the Vengeance. way. Vengeance. Because bullying's on the rise, unfortunately. Mm. That's a story for another day. We're we'll back in just a moment, guys. We have stories, comments, and questions in the fax machine. Wow. Now we're back with the fax machine. What do we got this week? From our listeners, Mr. Dawson. We got a message from Jorge. Um, Dear Carrie Chris and Parcel Pete, uh, while on my uh, recent trip to Japan, we fortunately um, discovered that we could have our heavy luggage forwarded to our next hotel thanks to the wonderful people at Yamato Transport. This sounds like an advert for Yamato Transport. Um, It was quite difficult to fill out all the kanji forms and wanting to ensure our luggage safely arrived at our next destination. The hotel staff were very helpful and assured us that everything would be fine soon enough. When we arrived the next day at our hotel in the next city, we pleasantly discovered that all of our carefully packed luggage, uh, wrapped luggage, tucked away in the corner of the hotel lobby and we picked it up with the greatest of ease. This made our life so much easier. Um, Wondering, is there any other services like this in Japan that could ease the path of the traveller while visiting multiple <laughs> cities through through Japan. What other travel hacks uh, are we not aware of? I've seen like a lot of people who live in Japan. They do this all the time. They get to the airport and they just bang their bag to a company and then mm. it arrives. It's a good idea. It is if you're sort of travelling, 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 yeah. travelling, and it and it's so like the laptop, <laughs> like well, the laptop that I was speaking like about earlier laptop. on. It arrived exactly when it was supposed to arrive. The miracle of Yamato yeah, transport. Exactly. Well done, Yamato. When I first landed as a teacher, I think they took my suitcases and just shot them off to Yamagata. Right. And then nice. when I got to my apartment five days later, they, they were, were there. Sort of there drenched in sweat. <laughs> what? Five days? Five Because oh, I went to the seminars. At oh, the seminars. Right. right okay. Basically, I was a truant of that seminar. I, b- I sat in my bed and ate crisps for like three days. Right. When I should have been like learning the ways of teaching. The ways of teaching. Some shit seminar. That's why they don't like your lesson truant. plans. That's, that's why. Yeah. 
Thank God there weren't any robots in the uh, in the seminars at the Kea Plaza <laughs> Hotel. Uh, we got one from Seattle. Very nice, Ooh. Seattle. David from Seattle says, Hi, amiable, amiable Chris and humorist yeah. Pete. Long time listener. Planning my first trip to Japan for next March with a group of friends. What's your favourite observation deck in Tokyo? Your favourite observation deck, Pete. Mm. What is it? Um, I did have tickets for the old... Um, is it Shibuya Sky? The yeah, thing yeah, that, yeah. Scramble uh, Tower. Didn't, didn't yeah. do it in the end. You didn't do it? Went, went to go and see some pigs in Harajuku. <laughs> You went to the um, yeah, it's a little pig cafe. The pig cafe, micro pigs, right? Micro pigs. Was it they everything are you wanted? So cute, Chris. Did you steal one? Didn't steal one. Um, it, it, my partner isn't the biggest fan of eating pork unless she's very hungover and <laughs> baking sandwiches on offer. Uh, but she, yeah, she's she's very much against it. Um, and. Uh, it sh- should have really done it at the end of the holiday because a lot of there's a lot of pork in Japanese food. There isn't is, there? yeah, yeah. Any bit of ramen has a bit of <laughs> has a bit Not of pork that much, though. bashed in um, for fun and profit. And uh, yeah, I think taking her to um, a, a micro pig um, cafe at the start of the holiday wasn't the best idea. So yeah, I, what's the micro pig cafe like? Um. It's just a lot of pigs running around. <laughs> I didn't even have a coffee to be honest. They're just like the, the pigs were very much the focus. Right. Yeah. Um, the website is impossible to work. I had to email them separately. So I go, sorry, your website's terrible. Can you can you just book me in? Uh, and then when I turned up, they hadn't booked me in. And so they just let us have the pigs anyway. So <laughs> pass the pigs, I shouted. How many people were in the pig cafe? Was we, had a, we, had a, we had a spare little, we had a little room to ourselves. So it was... Um, oh, what a private yeah, micro pig yeah. experience. We were, in the, we were in the VIP, baby. What? We made it rain. <laughs> what a pig's <laughs> eat. Oh. So- they got little waggy tails that wag like dogs. Come oh, on, you having that? That's cute. You having that? That's cute. Oh, and we also and also uh, to try and um, cheer Sarah up after me eating um, a big hot dog after that. Um, I took her to uh, a dog cafe. So you went to all the all the all cafes. the cafes, all the touristy stuff. Dog Game cafes, out of the pig stuff cafes. you're not going to see anywhere else. Um, but um, what I very much liked is that some of the you, you get you buy a deluxe selection of dog food, chicken. Pellets. I don't know what fucking dogs eat. I do know because I've got one. I've got two. Um, uh, and the uh, some of them aren't allowed chicken. They're allergic to chicken, which sounds like a mad old tale. Mm. Which dogs are allergic to chicken? Come on. And um, some of them are on a diet. They must rotate. The, and and the ones that have got a diet have got little um, little necklaces on. That's not necklaces. They've got the little uh, little collars on. Um, but I think they just rotate them so the dogs don't get fat. Because you could just how you don't know how many people are going to turn up during the day and like you know feed feed the dogs a lot of food. So <laughs> some big fat dogs running around, wouldn't you? <laughs> wouldn't you? What was better, the dog cafe or the pig cafe? Oh, definitely the pig cafe. Uh, yeah, unique dogs are unique. sleepy as hell. <laughs> terrible, terrible place. We got one last question from Soda. Hmm. Soda oh. from Sweden. That's a oh. that's a cool name. Hello, carnivorous yeah. Chris and Petite Pete. Soda from Sweden here. Uh, proving we do also watch the podcast on YouTube. Yes. Hello, Soda from Sweden. Hello, yes, the Swedes. Sweden. Hello, the Swedes. Stick around, Sweden. Yeah. First of all, a Swedish demographic. Is there anything they can't do? For, first of all, a big thank you for answering a question of mine a handful of episodes ago about avoiding carbohydrates in Japan. I have a follow-up question now. Since the last question, I have taken a step further and went full carnivore, where I now only eat meat, eggs, bacon, and dairy. That right. absolutely got incredible health benefits from it. <laughs> However, but my <laughs> farts. <laughs> <laughs> However, starting October, I will finally, after several years of pandemic, start studying Japanese in Sapporo. Hey. My question Woo. is: generally, how expensive is dairy, beef, eggs, fish, and animal products in general? And if I want to choose to indulge myself with foods from restaurants, what kind of options would I would exist where I can get away with eating only meat, or at least with a minimal amount of vegetables? Christ, soda. I'm I worried. Mean, I, soda needs to not do this. I, mean, I don't know what absolute wacky uh, diet plan you've yeah. got off Instagram, but this sounds mad. This Absolutely is, mad. It's not going to end well. Just eating Hokkaido ice cream all the way through yeah. because the milk is the best milk in Japan. It is good. Mm. Uh, I mean, yaki, is it? Yaki, it is good. Yeah, of course it's good. Is it? Hokkaido's got cows. Mm. Of course it's good. I don't know why that makes Tokyo's good... got pigs. Stroked a couple. Micro... You, you can't eat a micro pig. <sighs> I'd have a go. I'd, I'd have a little nibble. <laughs> I'd have a little nibble. Oh, no. What's one bite going to happen? Poor old little um, micro pig. Poor little micro pig. I mean, you're going to be in heaven in October soda mm. because Yaki Nicky barbecue okay. for like two, three, four thousand yen, you can get all you eat, all you can eat. All you eat. Fucking <laughs> beef, chicken, cow, lamb, sheep. Horses mm. on a platter for two hours, mm. and that's going to be all you eat, right? 
they, with some lettuce. They, get some lettuce for crying have out loud. Lettuce, have some lettuce. Have some kimchi. Loud. Sorry. Um, I was, when we were in the uh, beach uh, place, the um, the old um, Shiraham Shiraham Beach, um, we, um, for whatever reason, the hotel we stayed, the, the thing about, like, I, I, said, I said to Sarah, I said, look, <clears throat> I can take you to places that have beaches and stuff, but, because like sunbathing isn't a big thing, and everyone wears like you know dark clothes to, mm. to go in the water and stuff, mm. the, it might look like a resort and it might look like something you like, but there'll be some weird shit happening. And <laughs> true to form, the hotel we stayed in had two restaurants, both of which were open, uh, but could not serve us any food what? Um, because we had to book a day in advance. And it's like oh. it's a restaurant, um, and so like uh, we, so I said, look, we'll drive down the hill. I need to go and wash some clothes because I bought limited clothes. And uh, I, um, we found, uh, we just went randomly. This, this, this kind of, it said surf shack or something. And I went in and it was Taba fucking Hodai. It was, Ooh. and it had every major cuisine you've ever had Ooh. from your okonomiyakis to your goddamn sashimi to your goddamn shark fin soup. You had oh, no. all kinds, all kinds of every single last thing that you would ever want to try. Not great examples of it, but you know, <laughs> the best level of food in Japan is but was decent. There, was there micro pig? It wasn't micro pig. There was shabu shabu. <laughs> um, right. And, but it was like, it, it was pork and I was like, Boiled so, meat, right? Shabu shabu. Yeah, shabu shabu. So, so I bashed it in there and I was like, and it was just a communal Shabu shabu. So I was like, I don't know how long to cook this. So it doesn't look like it's boiling. It just looks like it's warm water. And it just it doesn't seem like it's boiling. Oh, no. And I went, I went, is this? Is this? And it's I didn't know. Shabu shabu means like swish swish. Swish swish. So you swish the right, pork okay. in the hot water. Didn't know. I just walked. Well, off. And it didn't. It didn't cook. No, it, it took. I put it in about five minutes. Oh dear, <laughs> that's not good. But it just had every major cuisine you could ever eat. And I went, look, Sarah, like this is like a free hit for you. Just take everything. Eat it um, all. And 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 like salt, just a lot of solid plums. Like uh, what? Salt what? plums. Salt plums. Just, oh, okay. I like I like them, but they're very tart. They're horrible, aren't they? Tart. They're disgusting. And there's different flavors mm. and it's salted ones and bits of fish in it. Well, soda won't be having any of those no. because soda only eats no. dairy, eggs, fish, and animal products. Best of luck with that diet. Best, Best of luck, luck yeah. in Japan studying. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, you're gonna have a whale of a time. Bloody love Hokkaido. Don't October. eat whale. Don't eat whale. Don't eat they do do that, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, in Japan. Yeah. But if you're going to be in Hokkaido, try Genghis Khan lamb mutton. It's to die for. And it's oh. amazing. And it's a good Tabu Hordai place in Tuskino. But nice. that's all for now, folks. Uh, keep the stories, questions, comments coming into a Japan podcast at gmail.com. We'll be back for one last episode with me, with the great Pete Donaldson in a room before I fly back to Japan. Mm. Uh, you're off to Heathy in a bit, aren't uh, you? In a few days' time. Mm. And uh, we'll see you then, guys. But for now, have yourself a good few days. See you right back here. Let's do it all over again on the Born Japan podcast. Bye for now. Bye-bye.